Ruiz has hit four home runs this postseason. Breeze hits it in the air to center. We will see you tomorrow night. I'm telling you, when that call came out of Joe Buck's mouth, chills down the spine for so many reasons. And you can relive that one and many more of Joe's great uh, baseball calls. A lifetime in the game, despite the fact that uh, he's not an old guy. The Sounds of Baseball featuring the work of Joe Buck. It premieres tonight on MLB Network at 8 Eastern. Welcome back to Hot Stove. And we welcome Joe to the program on this Thursday morning. Um, Joe, there's so many places to start. First of all, good morning, man. Good, good to morning. see you. Good morning. It's good to be on with a couple of friends. Did I hear Harold chiming in from like set well, D over there? Th that's huh? Maddie's uh, creativity. In, Go ahead. In, in absentia. Harold loves uh, going through some of these calls. I love history. Yeah, I know. We, Harold, we love history too. Oh, that's why we I got it. I took the bait, right. is what you're saying. Gosh, yeah. I could have executed a whole interview with you as Harold, but uh, <laughs> missed an opportunity once more. Hey, I want to ask you, Joe, before, before we get uh, too deep into everything, about that call specifically. And, you know, longstanding baseball fans are aware of why that call was so perfect and. Um, and in emotion, emotion eliciting, uh, paying homage to your dad, spot on. Did you enter that series or any World Series thinking there might be a chance to do that and, and it appeared that night, or did it just come to you that day? You know, it, somebody alerted me to this on X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, about a year ago when they played an early part of that game. I, I saw it on somebody's account, and it was our trivia question that night. So to answer your question, I, I, I don't feel like, except for the McGuire year in 98, I ever went into a game thinking, okay, if something happens, this is what I'm going to say. You know, you guys have done a million games. I think that's a trap. It's something that you, you just – I, the, the call has to be true to the moment. But earlier in that game, in game six, the trivia question was about uh, the Kirby Puckett home run. And so earlier in the game, the trivia question was, you know, 20 years basically to that night earlier, uh, who hit a game six home run to force a game seven? And, you know, obviously it's Kirby Puckett, it's the Minnesota Twins, and Tim was sitting next to me and said, and what'd your dad say? He said, we'll see you tomorrow night. And so it was in the back of my head the rest of the night. And then when that moment happened, uh, it just jumped right out of my mouth. So, no, I was not thinking about it from before the game, but it was planted in there earlier in that game by our trivia question. Perfect settling into the subconscious so it didn't sound yeah. like you'd been sitting on it. It was it was a great moment. So uh, this is news because uh, obviously being a, uh, an amateur at this with uh, your, your greatness and Matty V's done so many games and national games. But you, you never had uh, where you not scripted, Joe, but something prior to a game or series or a call that was in your back pocket that you you thought about using yeah I, I i really honestly the only time i did that was in 98 in the mcguire chase when everybody kept everybody kept asking me you know hey if you're on the mic what are you going to say if mcguire hits 62 what are you going to say what are you going to say and i kept saying to people i, I have no idea i don't know what i'm going to say at any moment it just kind of comes out and you know, I think I learned that in 96 when I was 27 and in some ways scared out of my mind, hmm. calling the Yankees winning the World Series uh, with the Charlie Hayes catch in foul territory. Yeah. That home run made it so unfair that you're showing right there because of all the home runs that he hit that year, <laughs> that was a hooking line drive that was barely fair and barely over the wall. And I was doing the game from the TV booth, which was one to the right of the radio booth. And so I had a look right down the line of that home run hooking into the corner and actually being a home run. And what I had written down, so I took the bait. Everybody's asking me. I kept saying no. And then that day I woke up and I'm like, man, I got to come up with something that's just mind-blowing. It's going to be so good. I wrote it down. I put it in my scorebook. And because that home run was what it was, that it was just that – little diving line drive I could never get my eyes down mm -hmm. to what I had written 
And I just ended up calling the home run, saying you're the single season home run king. And then because my eyes were up and not down on this corny script that I had written in the morning, I noticed that he too was watching the ball and leaped over first base and missed it. And that's when I said, touch first, Mark, you're the new single season home run uh, yeah. king, which that would have <laughs> never, it was to the moment and it would have obviously never crossed my mind at these seven o'clock that morning. Did you save the script? What was it? I, I do have it. It's in a scorebook in a cabinet behind me uh, right now. And uh, the script was something like McGuire rounds the bases and ends in the history books or some junk that, thank God, <laughs> didn't come out of my mouth. I love you know, it. I'll say on your behalf, um, the bait that you never took that almost all of us did when we started doing this is that there's this thing in your mind that this is what it's supposed to sound like. And you're doing that. Roy Firestone imitation, uh, that bit that he used to do in his stand-up where you're driving through the southeast or you're on Tobacco Road and you're tuning your AM radio dial and you hear guys swallowing all their words. Like, Here's the two and two, wow, wow, all that stuff. Um, yeah. How did you avoid that trap as a younger guy? Because your stage was, was very big at a young age. Yeah, I mean, I could I, I see therapists because of all this stuff, uh, you know, following my dad in into the booth, being in St. Louis, being Jack Buck's son, um, being around town, just going to dinners and stuff and and knowing that eyes were on me and then being 21 doing it uh, professionally mm. with with that guy calling him my partner and mm. and trying to forge my own way, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to trying to sound like not Jack Buck, even though I think wherever you grew up, and I say this to young people when they're getting into this business, I think you take your cues, at least with your rhythm and your timing of how you make calls from who you listen to growing up. So there's a lot of that in me that I was, you know, I was just subjected to, and thank God I was. I had a master class every night, but I, I didn't want to get into this sounding like him let well, alone that broadcaster who sounds like <laughs> has a ground ball to show it and he picks it up and throws the foot. Yeah. It's just nobody. It's like Brockmeyer. That's why yeah. Hank Azaria has this great character, uh, Brockmeyer, because it's just a caricature of, of how people talk. So uh, I, re uh, I remember you telling me uh, I got a chance for Fox when I was an active player to go in the booth in 04 with you and Tim. And uh, – just how difficult, or maybe you could talk about how difficult, you as well, Matt, when you're doing a national broadcast. I, I told a friend, he lives in Philadelphia, I said, oh, I gotta be on the show with Matt Vescursion, and, and, and Joe Buck's gonna be on. Oh my God, he hates the Phillies, he hates Philadelphia, I know he hates the Eagles. And I remember you telling me during this, because no matter what you said or did, that w each team didn't like you. And, and does that actually make a national broadcaster, play-by-play -play person, um, good? Because you actually have to show neutrality? If you piss off both fan bases, yeah. have you done your job? Yeah, I, I think to some degree. But but for somebody like me that, that's kind of a pleaser, it's, it's a hard road to walk because I, I don't like that. I don't like that perception that's out there when you're doing it. And when people go, oh, you did 24 World Series, don't you miss it? Don't... That's the one part that was like death by a thousand cuts. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to admit it. If there's anything that kind of drove me out, it was that perception that, oh, you hate my team. And, and it's, it's obvious why, but fans don't think about it. I got to experience it as a hockey fan when the team I love, the Blues won the Stanley Cup. I love the guys who were calling nationally, but I'm sitting there going, why do they like the Bruins so much? Yeah. And then I was like, I caught myself. Like, oh, this is what fans, because all year long, fans hear their games on TV, as opposed to the NFL, with local broadcasters who are living and dying along with the fans. They hit a home run, everybody's happy. The team that, that you root for and that this guy's broadcasting for loses a lead, they're sad. And so now you come in, the team that loses the lead, you're screaming and yelling because they hit a home run, and the perception by the fan base is, well, why does this guy hate my team? And it's it's obviously not that. Yeah, you've got to be excited for both sides. So I guess in a roundabout way, yeah. I mean, if if both fan bases think that you don't like their team, you've been down the middle. But it's still hard for me to to swallow when people say that 
because it 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 hurts a little bit and it's like no I don't I swear to God I don't yeah, I don't yeah, care yeah. who wins I want to see a good game. Yeah. All right, here real quick, Batty, I want to ask him. Uh, the, now you're uh, NFL, so no more baseball at least for now. Um, how would you have liked uh, doing games now with the clock? I, that's us like, now you do it? <laughs> After all those nights at Fenway and Yankee Stadium and getting back to the hotel at 1.30 in the yeah. morning, I, I would have loved it. I, I, I think a lot of the changes are so good for the game, so I, I never got to experience it, maybe someday in the future, but uh, I, it, it really makes a difference, and, and I, I would have liked to have at least felt what that meant to a play-by-play -play guy uh, because I think it does it speeds you up too, which which is probably a good thing as well. Yeah, yeah we're all a little bit better for for that. Hey, Joe, I want to ask you this because uh, I've had moments like this where you're so off on the air for whatever reason, right? Too much caffeine, not enough caffeine, too much cold medicine. Maybe you got into the catnip the night before, whatever it might be. <laughs> uh, was there anything you recall, either on a national or local level, where you knew you were off that day and you just had to slug through it? Um, yeah, I mean, when, when there was a rain out in a World Series and you miss that travel day and then you, you kind of show up, you know, you fly all night because everything's pushed back. There, there's no off day. Or I was doing football at the same time and, you know, you, you fly all night and you get into a city. Now, this is not complaining. I Trust me, I get it. I'm the luckiest guy in the mm -hmm. world on every count. But, yeah, you show up tired. I remember the first cup of coffee I ever had was in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in 1996 prior to game three because there was no travel day. There was a rain out in game one, mm -hmm. and I got to the stadium like, man, I'm tired. I'm 27. <laughs> like, I'm tired. I'm going to be terrible on the air. I'm going to drink a cup of coffee. And I drank a cup of coffee, and then I was wired because it was the first time I ever had one, probably going 100 miles an hour. But, yeah, obviously. I mean, life intercedes. I remember my dad, and I know we got to go, telling me, remember, remember, Buck, nobody cares if the announcer's cold. Nobody cares if the announcer's tired. Nobody cares what you shot playing golf that day. Just do your job and call the game, and that you'll be in. You'll be. Uh, you'll be doing it right if you uh -huh. don't start complaining on the air. Well, that's a great public uh -huh. service to all of us that do this for sure. Joe, it's great to see yeah. you, man. Uh, yeah. We appreciate you taking a little bit of time. Your show premieres tonight. Uh, sounds of Baseball, the Joe Buck edition. It's really good. We've seen the advanced copy, and uh, we hope you like it. I know uh, I know our guys put in a lot of work on it. I so. mean, yeah, from Cornblatt to Bob to to uh, to Verducci, they I, I can't thank them enough. It's it's great. Well, uh, baseball fans miss you. We do. Well, this fan you. misses you. We do. We do. But we we get Thanks, you. Guys. We get you on Mondays with uh, with Aikman. So we'll take take what we can get. Way to go, Joe. Good yeah. to see you, man. Thanks thank for the visit.